Morning folks, so this morning I want to talk about why do so many people, me included, fear the idea of doing a natural dirty tank. I've watched a ton of videos from Father Fish to uh, Salem Aquatics. Uh, there's several of them. Hattie's Aquatics. You know, a lot of these folks. Uh, and there's another guy, Natural Aquariums or something like that. But all these guys have done natural tanks. You know, and they're proven. I mean, they've done them. But so many of us fear doing it, we're scared of doing it, don't want to do it, just just have big fears. Well, I finally broke down and decided to do one. And now, I'm so glad I did. I even see this tank right here behind me. Um, we happen to call it the Oreo cookie tank. Uh, Stubbs Aquatic kind of named it because of the substrate, because I have the actual father fish's dirted substrate on the bottom and then I put white sand on there and I didn't really like to have white sand in the tank so I put a black sand cap because I didn't have enough black sand to make the cap big enough. So that tank, this tank has been up now uh, probably about a month now I think and I planted it. I started out um, with a few plants. I didn't have a whole ton of plants at the time. And I tried to put fish in it right away. I had I put shrimp in it and they did fine. So I, I put a couple guppies in there um, soon after, within a, a day or two. And they didn't make it. The water parameters were just out of whack. Ammonia and nitrate and nitrite, all of it. All the bad stuff, I had it all. So I had to give it time. and. That is something I think um, all of us that um, are doing this for the first time and are not experienced with uh, a dirty tank, you got to give your tank time to figure itself out. I, I like Father Fish's talks, and he, he always says, you know, nature figures itself out. I mean, you look outside, you got ponds, you got rivers, you know, the fish are alive, they're doing well. You know, how are they doing it? Because nobody's cleaning the rivers, nobody's cleaning the ponds and all that stuff. So nature takes its course. And that's really what we had to have happen here. Um, so now, at a month old, you know, this tank up here right behind me is doing very well. The plants are flourishing very well. It's getting really thick. And I've got shrimp in there still. I have some guppies and just recently, just yesterday or the day before I think, uh, I found I got baby guppies. Of course, baby guppies, you know, that's, we all know guppies just make babies, you know, that's what they do. So, I mean, that's really no surprise. So, anyhow, I am so happy I've done a dirty tank. And so, was it last week? Uh, on one of the Facebook pages for my subdivision that I live in, a guy put out there that he had these tanks on the side of the road. He was throwing them out, giving them away. So it was right down the street, literally, like 200 yards, I guess, maybe. So I went down there, picked up the two tanks. So he had a 29-gallon and a 10-gallon, and they were used for turtles. They were pretty dirty and everything, so I cleaned them up. The 10-gallon tank is over in that closet back over here you can't see and the 29 gallon I decided I'm making another dirted tank but this tank is outside I don't have room in here for another tank the only way I would be able to do that is to take my computer desk out of here and put it in a different room which I could do that if I wanted to but I don't think my wife will allow that so anyway I took that 29 gallon and cleaned it all up did a leak test on it, make sure it you know, wasn't leaking or everything. And I did have a leak at the very top corner because I filled it up real high and it was leaking around the plastic frame. So I siliconed the frame back in there and real good. And I did a video um, 
and I'll, I'll link it in the description. I did a video where I built this 29 gallon dirty tank from scratch. I'm talking, I didn't use, uh, like I did in this tank here, I used Father Fish's uh, dirty substrate. I actually bought it and put it in there. This time I took, I have a um, compost pile that I compost my grass, leaves, you name it. Uh, I throw it in there and I've had it for running for about two years now. So I literally took the barrel and took it all out, dumped it all out and got the stuff from the bottom that's composted really good and it's basically back to almost dirt now. So I took a bunch of that and I put and added a one inch layer of compost, just straight compost right out of my, you know, my property. You know, it didn't cost me nothing, just time. So I put that compost in there and then I had um, a five gallon bucket of white sand that I used to have the sand, I have a 75 gallon tank sitting over here that used to have white sand in it and I changed it to a, a fully planted, planted tank and so um, I kept that white sand. So I capped the 29 gallon with the white sand. So I have about a three inch cap on top of this uh, uh, compost. Well, and I put a bunch of plants in there. Um, I, actually, I grabbed plants right out of a local pond. Um, so they're free plants. <laughs> and then I do have some plants that I propagated from various tanks and stuck in there too as well. So for now, I'm not putting any fish in that tank because it's outside and I'm in Texas and it's hot. And so in the evening time, the sun from the west comes onto my back patio where this tank is. So the water gets pretty warm. Um, it was like 90 degrees um, the other night when I checked it. But then in the morning time, it's like 84 degrees. So there's a big temperature swing in there and I gotta figure out what kind of fish I can put in there that could survive in the heat. Because in the winter time, you know, it gets cold enough here that we do get frost. Sometimes we get snow. So in the winter time, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to move that tank and put it in like my garage or something to stay warmer and put a light on it to keep the plants alive. So there's a lot of things, you know, that uh, I wanna do. But I just go back to the fear of doing it, being scared of doing it. And now that I've done it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. This tank right behind me, I'm telling you, that tank is just doing so well. The water's crystal clear. The only filtration I have on there is a sponge filter, that's it. And that is a 20 tall, 20 gallon tall. And in my 29 gallon out of the patio, I've got a single sponge filter as well. So. I am really, really happy. I'm excited to see how the one out on the back patio goes because it's going to get a lot of algae, I'm sure, because of the sunlight. I mean, it has daylight all day long, you know, and then the bright sun at night, you know, when the sun beams onto my patio. So I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of algae, which is fine. I don't care. Um, I just want to see how well these plants will do out there. And I, I keep monitoring the water temperature, and then I've got to figure out what kind of fish I can put in there. If you have any suggestions of what kind of fish I could put in a 29-gallon out on a patio that in Texas where it gets hot, uh, please let me know. Give me your thoughts. I'm thinking maybe rice fish, um, maybe a goldfish or two. Um, just not sure yet. So anyhow, that's where I'm at with it. And I'm telling you guys, if you folks are scared of doing a natural tank, step out in faith and do it. Just check it out. I think you'll be very, very pleased with your end results when it's all said and done. So, like I say, if you're even thinking about doing it and you're nervous about doing it, my gosh, just... Take, take the step, go and try it. You will be so pleased. 
promise you, you'll be pleased with it. One thing I will say about it, you've got to give it time. Um, don't expect miracles from day one. I mean, it, it's going to happen, but you got to let nature take its course. Now, the only bad thing that I can see about having a dirted substrate planted tank is if you wanted to move plants, it may be pretty difficult because once it's rooted into the soil real good and you try to pull it up, you're going to pull that dirt from the bottom of the tank up. So that may be a drawback to some folks. Um, even maybe for me if I want to run to do that. Or it's just a matter you cut your plants down and repropagate them by taking trimmings off them. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, folks, this is what I'm saying, you know, if you are in the idea or the thought process or you're very interested in doing a dirty tank, check out Father Fish, check out, you know, Stubbs Aquatic, check out uh, Santa Aquatics, you can check out uh, Patty's Aquatics. There's so many people out there that have, have done it and are experienced with it and are willing to help you. Father Fish has a Discord channel tells you how to do it all, you know, I'm telling you, I just like saying, I've been wanting, I've had that itch to do it and do it and do it and do it and then like, uh, uh, I don't want to do it, I'm nervous, you know, but once you do it, you're going to be like, holy crap, why didn't I do this a long time ago? And the benefits of it is, is a whole lot less maintenance. Uh, just due to the fact that, you know, the plants take care of the tank. In reality so anyhow that's my thought for the day let me know what you think about dirty tanks have you tried one do you want to try one if you want to try one you know reach out to these folks that are on YouTube I mean there's a lot of good information out there that will help you so I uh, hope that you would uh, enjoy it and try it you know uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you do one you really would Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope you share this video. Um, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Anyway, I hope you have a great week. And I'm going to have a great week. I know it. I can feel it already because I'm excited with dirty tanks. They're awesome. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.